Welcome to Gapology Radio with your hosts, Mark Tinas and Brian Brockoff, authors of the leadership development books, Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose. At Gapology, our purpose is to help leaders achieve their greatest potential. To learn more about our groundbreaking books and training services, visit our website, gapology.org. Hey everybody, welcome to Gapology Radio. Remember, as you're planning out your training strategy for the last half of the year, keep our online video-based training course for Gapology in mind. It's built with time efficiency in mind, quickly bringing a new learner up to speed on the methods and tools from our flagship book. It's also a great vehicle for reinforcing learning after reading the book or attending one of our workshops. It's available on udemy.com. That's U-D-E-M-Y dot com. And as for tonight, we're continuing our series discussing specific cultural elements in the workplace. Tonight is all about creating an action-based analysis culture. So let's go ahead and get things rolling with Martinez. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Hey, Brian, I'm good. Good. How are you? I am wonderful. I am so good today. You know, it's interesting. I was having some conversations with some leaders um, about their results, and we were talking about, um, you know, some of the things that they're going after and some of the things they're struggling with. And we were just actually, honestly, just kind of chit-chatting. This was two days ago. They reached out, and and it was just more of a conversation. Hey, you know, we're doing really well with this stuff. And then we were kind of talking about a few things that we're struggling with. And we got on the topic about um, analysis, analyzing results. So, you know, we were talking about their results and they're sharing, you know, what what their process was and that kind of thing. And it was essentially, we were kind of talking about their leadership rhythm. Um, And one of the things I, I asked them, and it was more of a challenging type question was, so tell me about the action that you're creating from the analysis. And it was, uh, kind of a stump type of question for them where they were kind of stumped. So they were like, well, you know, we're, we're looking at it and we're, you know, trying to understand, you know, where we're missing. And I went back to the question. So what are you doing with that information? And the, the discovery was really around that they were looking at the numbers just as information, but not necessarily to drive any sort of action. And so, you know, I think this would be a kind of a cool topic when we're talking about culture. I think it's important for leaders to not just analyze their numbers, but to create action and and then developing a culture within an organization around that. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on on creating an action-based analysis culture. So what do you think? Well, this is a big topic, so thank you for bringing it up. So great cultures are curious so what's missing in what you're describing is curiosity yeah so when you have a group within the organization producing a certain metric and a group in the organization producing a substantially lesser metric there needs to be a curiosity about the behaviors that equal that metric We need as an organization to be on purpose about metrics and how to leverage them and to understand that they reflect the behavior presented. And most organizations miss this. I've seen it over and over again. So there is a lack of curiosity about why this group is producing a great metric and why this group is producing a lesser metric. That curiosity is huge and understanding it can lead to great performance. So that that's the first thing I would answer to your question. Yeah. I think it's, it's incredibly important to understand the reason behind it. Um, and oftentimes, you know, we print out results, we look at them, okay, ah, we didn't do it very well this week, okay, and you kind of file it and you move on. Um, so understanding the connection between behaviors and results is incredibly important. Yeah, so what we found in the best performing organizations is that they understand what great looks like. Mm-hmm. 
They have defined it from a metric standpoint. They know what great looks like. They know what their purpose looks like from a metric standpoint. Once you understand that, you can move mountains. It's it's a big deal. So you you then can go after it and understand that lesser metrics equal lesser behaviors that apply to the purpose. So what is your what does your purpose look like when it is fully executed? What's that metric look like? You have to connect with that. It's uh, it's significant. So you define metrics and expectations by the purpose that you have and the behaviors that equal that purpose. Once you get there, you can really figure out what great looks like, what low performance looks like, and you can manage it from there. And you can move the metrics. It's it's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. So organizations, teams that have great analysis can create action through that analysis. So the publishing of the metrics, the understanding of the metrics that equal the purpose and the behaviors of the purpose change everything so that they can move forward much faster than anyone else. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I was just, as you're saying that, I was thinking back on an A-team event that we held. Um, I remember flying into Chicago for this A-team event where you pulled together um, a large group of people who were considered top performers. And we, you know, did this exercise where everyone in the location, they were all kind of top performers and, and we established what was possible. I always reflect back on that. I always think about how impactful it is to really discover what's possible so that you can really level set what your expectations are. Well, that's a great, great practice for those that are, are going to perform at a top level. So an A-team event means that you bring together the top 10% and you see what they do and you understand what they do, you observe what they do, and you set that as the expectation. So an A-team event is an educational performance for the leaders to understand what the best performers do behaviorally. It's a, it's a game changer. And again, it varies by your business, I understand that, by your organization. But we need to all be curious about what the top performers are doing differently than the rest. Once you understand that, you can spread it to the entire organization. It is significant, it's game-changing, and we called it the A-Team event, and it caused us to lead the industry in NOI performance, net operating income performance, and that changed everything. Yeah, very cool. So what's your next tip? Well, so if you go to Gapology, you've got to close the knowledge gap with the group. They have to understand what top performance versus bottom performance looks like from a metric standpoint. So you have to be very clear on the metrics that equal top performance. Once you're clear on that, and everyone's clear on that, then you have the behavioral component. You then know that the behaviors of that top performance group are different than the bottom performance group. As a leader of a team, likely you should go visit that observe that, understand that behavior that's equaling the top performance, because then you can spread it through the entire group. But it totally differentiates the, uh, the performance of the group. The leaders that are producing top performance are behaving differently than the leaders that are producing the bottom performance doesn't mean that they have to stay at the bottom performance. If you help them understand the top performance, they can likely, you know, transfer that understanding 
to the behaviors that can get them there. And it changes everything. So the knowledge gap is closed by the understanding of the behavior that equals both of those metrics. I think you hit it um, right on the head there when you were saying that for closing the knowledge gap, it's about the leader's knowledge, right? So understanding how to look at your results, define what behaviors are producing those results. And then that information is for the leader. So what behaviors were in place that created the result? What behaviors were missing if you didn't achieve the result that you're looking for? Defining those pieces, that's really about the leader's knowledge. So when we talk about closing the knowledge gap, that's really what we're talking about. That's a great point. So the knowledge gap is often the difference between the metric and the understanding of the behavior that equals the metric. So if you set an expectation for your team of, you know, 90%, whatever that means, what are the behaviors that equal that? Mm -hmm. You have to be incredibly clear on that and understand that as a leader and be able to spread that through the team. Once you can do that, you're unstoppable. If you don't do that, you're going to miss it. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss it. So the knowledge gap is closed by the leader. The knowledge gap here, to your point, Brian, is often the leader's knowledge gap. Right. Do they know the behaviors that equal this great performance? When you start creating exception reporting, a ranking versus a KPI, you're actually looking at a differential in behavior. So how do you figure that out? You often have to go observe it. You have to understand it so that you can share it. It's not that the bottom performing group is lesser. They just happen to not have the behavior. Once you share that behavior with them, they can likely become the top. Brian and I have often seen the bottom performing groups become the top performing groups when the leader closes the knowledge gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, often that's the fastest one to close. When you're looking at results and you're looking at the behaviors, understanding that you can quickly close your own knowledge gap around it, close any knowledge gaps your team might have around it, that those are like tactical things that that are very quick to be able to uh, implement. And oftentimes we're, you know, we're confused where to start. And we always, always advise starting with the knowledge gap. Yeah, so great leaders differentiate themselves because they close the knowledge gap first. Yep. That's why they're great leaders. They close the knowledge gap first. They've figured out what equals great performance. They share it with the entire team and suddenly everything has changed. Yep. And then from there, we move to the importance gap. Yeah. So why is that number an expectation? So our analysis of the best leaders is that they set very clear expectations. When they set an expectation, they are clear on why that's the expectation. And that matters. When you tell a team that here is why we have to achieve this number, it's a game changer. Often it's an alignment with purpose. Often it's an alignment with uh, financial results that have to be achieved. But when the team understands the importance of that number, We need to hit that number and the why of that number is a game changer. And uh, that has been a huge differentiator. Why are we setting that as an expectation? They need to be able to answer that question very clearly to the team and then describe the behaviors, demonstrate the behaviors that equal that. Once that importance gap is closed, everything moves dramatically forward. Yeah, you know, in in an action-based analysis culture, when trying to create that, this is really one of those missing links, I think. Uh, If a leader doesn't tie the, the reasons why we're doing things, reasons why the numbers are the numbers that we're going after, Um, if they're not tying that, they're not really tapping into the team's, uh, their beliefs, their heart, their, the purpose that drives them and to create action in a culture, you can use your analysis. You can use the results that you're looking at to define what those behaviors are. 
and creating then through that analysis, creating a uh, a message, a uh, spirit that you're able then to transfer to the team. Yeah, that's well said. Without the why, the metric is hollow. Mm -hmm. It's meaningless. When the team understands the why, why we need to achieve that metric, everything changes. So the expectation has to be clear to everyone and the why has to be clear to everyone. And then the exception reporting that comes in that ranks everyone by those metrics becomes significant because it becomes behavioral. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at a number, you're not looking at a number. You're looking at a behavior. And from that, you can learn how to achieve the top performance. You can have the top performers speak to their behaviors in a meeting with the group and help everyone understand, and you can move everyone forward. So the importance gap here is not insignificant at all. It becomes incredibly significant mm -hmm. because it moves the entire team forward. The why matters, and that metric matters. How did you choose that metric? Well, we didn't choose that metric. We understand that that metric is equivalent to the behaviors that tie to our purpose, mm -hmm. then then you've got a game-changing scenario. Yeah, just imagine talking to one of those top performers and asking them, why are the things that you're doing important to you? <laughs> you know, having them clarify that, having them clarify why the, the things matter, um, you know, how it impacts their objectives, their expectations, their purpose, the things that they're going after, um, you know, why is that important to them? Well, we did some other analysis of what you're describing there, and we found that the top performing teams love to come to work. Mm -hmm. huh, why would that be? That is because they find meaning in what they're doing. They have tied it to a purpose. We find that underperforming teams don't really like to come to work. Well, they don't understand <laughs> yeah. the importance of what they're doing. Yeah. We haven't totally. tied it for them. So there is this huge connection between between those pieces. And when teams love to come to work and they understand the expectation, you can explode the numbers. It's a game changer. Yep, absolutely. So then moving to the action gap, so what needs to happen as a result of the analysis? Uh, you know, I think that's that's the important piece here. So when we're talking about an action-based analysis culture, that's what we're talking about. So, you know, we close the knowledge gap, we close the importance gap, and now we have to close the action gap. So, so where, where do you think people should start here, Mark? Well, so as a leader, you would look at the numbers. So you've set a KPI, a key performance indicator. You've set an expectation on a specific number or series of numbers. Who are the top performers? Who are the bottom performers? What's the difference in their behavior? Once you know that, you can create action to achieve the great number. The bottom performing group is often not the bottom performing group once they know the behaviors that equal the top. This is a leader issue. The leader needs to level the playing field by ensuring that the top performing group and the bottom performing group understand the behaviors that equal the metric. The metric wasn't set, hopefully, you know, just, you know, at random. It was set because it equaled the behaviors that get us there. And knowing that those behaviors do get us there. Once you're in that ballpark where the metrics clearly reflect the behaviors of your team, you can move the team anywhere you want to. You fully understand it. So the action gap is often, again, just simply the leader tying the KPI, the metric that's expected, to the behaviors and working with those teams to achieve that set of behaviors. It's uh, It works. It works mm -hmm. every time. Yeah, I think the, uh, the power of Gapology, it starts with the leader. So you close your own knowledge gap close your own importance gap, and then you close your own action gap, which then those actions of the leader then can create um, an environment, a culture where the teams 
knowledge gaps, importance gaps, and action gaps are then closed. So, you know, defining for yourself, what are the things that, that I need to celebrate? What are the things I need to course correct, for instance? Uh, what things need to be completely changed, for instance? Um, you know, defining those things and then taking action, then putting the steps in place to actually, you know, make those changes or, or create the, those opportunities for celebration, whatever uh, is necessary. I think that's part of the the power of gapology as a whole. Yeah, well, well said. So when a leader has a gap, a big gap between the top performers and the bottom performers, the leader is the gap. So the leader's job is really to close the gap between the top and bottom performers by sharing the behaviors that equal top performance, demonstrating that and so on. Yeah. So when, when you as a leader look in the mirror right now, when you have a huge gap between these top performers and these bottom performers, it's about you. So if you accept that, you can change everything. And mm -hmm. everyone can be middle to top performer. Everything changes. We've seen this happen over and over again. And it's not about terminating the bottom performers. It's about you as a leader stepping up and teaching them how to become top performers. Yeah, exactly. And I know you're about to tell me to write that down, Brian. Right. Write, so, write that down, Brian. So the leader is the gap, right? I would love to have a t-shirt like that. <laughs> I would wear it like every day. Yeah, with a picture maybe, of a mirror on it. Maybe a sweatshirt. Yeah, there we go. Sweatshirt. Depending on the weather. Yeah. Depending on the weather. But <laughs> yeah, so it, it yeah. really, as leaders, it it's back to us. It's about us. And when, when we understand that the metric equals the behaviors that we're insisting upon, everything changes. Things below that need to be corrected. Things above that need to be understood because maybe that's the new bar. Yeah. If you're a leader out there and you're listening in, if you want to create action on your team, it all starts with your analysis. And then from the analysis, you need to determine what are the behaviors that are producing the results. And then from that, to, you know, close the knowledge gap, close the importance gap, close the action gap, and get to work. Um, create action. It all starts with the leader. Write that down. That, that was well said. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> thanks, Brian. All right. That was good, Mark. Thanks much. Well done. Yep. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right. That'll do it from here. For more information on Gapology, Imbar, Speed of Purpose, or to find the link to our online learning course, head on over to our website, gapology.org. Everyone have a fantastic week. We'll talk to you soon. This has been a Gapology Institute production. Visit us at gapology.org.